Welcome to Real IQ. In this video, I am going to show you how you can separate your home partition in Linux Mint 22.1. This video it's more beginner friendly. So if you don't want to understand what is home partition, you can skip to the installation part. So let's look into what is home partition. And by the way, this thing should work in any other Linux distribution as well. So it's not limited to Linux Mint. You can use it in Fedian or Fedora, Debian or Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution for that matter. So I have created a blog on that and I'm just uh, going to use that blog as a reference in this video. Okay. Okay. So that's my blog. So let's first understand what is home partition in Linux. Okay. So home partition, it's very similar to your users folder or users directory in Windows. Okay. It holds your data like download documents, desktop setting or browser setting or app configuration. All those things will be stored as part of your home directory. Okay. So what are some advantages of having home direct uh, home partition separated? So it's safe to reinstall. That simply means that if you are reinstalling any other Linux distribution or the same Linux distribution, you are not losing your data if you do so. Okay. It is better for cleaner system maintenance. That means that uh, if you have your personal data stored in home directory and if something breaks in Linux, okay, ideally in any other distribution as well, if it breaks something and you cannot log in, your data is still safe in your home partition. So you can just reinstall your uh, Linux distribution and you should you should be fine. Faster disaster recovery. That means that you can store your backups as part of your home partition. And whenever something breaks, you can use that backup and restore everything. So it's multi-distro and multi-user friendly. That simply means that if you have a multiple user in the same Linux distribution, or if you have a multiple distribution like Debian, Fedora, and Linux Mint, you can see the same files in all three distribution at the same time. Obviously, you need to open that particular distribution to see the file. But if you save the file in Linux Mint, you should be able to see the same file in your Ubuntu or Debian if you are doing dual boot. Okay. Disadvantage. I, I would not consider it as a more of the disadvantage, but uh, I would like to include it just for the safety reason. It requires some partition planning. What does it mean by that? So let's say if you are doing any Windows installation as well, you need to have a little bit of understanding how to separate your drives either it's a c drive d drive e drive we just name it like that right in linux everything is like folders right so it's not similar partition when you do it in windows and when you do it in linux so that's what it means by partition planning okay so you need to plan for it you cannot just allocate the space to your home partition Second thing, it's harder to resize later. So once you create a home partition, if you want to resize it later, you need to format the whole system and resize it. It's the same thing for Windows as well. So I would not consider it as a more of the disadvantage, but it's there. So this is kind of a caution. Okay, can't always be used as safely. Okay, that simply means that if you are using multiple distribution of Linux. So let's say if you are using Debian, if you are using Ubuntu, both the things together, it might cause some problem if you are storing your configuration file as part of your home directory. So you need to make sure that you just store your data as part of the home directory. Everything else should be part of the root as well. But majority of time people just store their data inside the home directory. Okay. So installation part again, I'll, I'll be adding the screenshot of the actual installation as well. So first thing first, you need to have a bootable drive. Okay. So any normal pen drive like this should work. Okay. As long as it has eight GB of storage minimum. Okay. Then you can use tools like Rufus, Belly Asher, or there are multiple tools available. So if you are using Rufus, just plug in your pen drive, download the ISO file from the official website. I'll link that in the in the video description. Okay. Once you download those things, you just uh, create a bootable pen drive and you go from there. Okay. So since I'm not going to show you the whole installation part and more focused on the partition, I'll just skip ahead and move to the partition part. Okay. 
so once you once you load the pen drive and open up your installation it should open up as a desktop in majority of time it's it's a straight forward desktop environment okay you just go ahead and do the install linux mint here so i'm using virtual machine just to explain the whole scenario it has 4 gigabyte of ram and 100 gb of storage so you can consider 100 as 100 percent and distribute it accordingly So that's a basic installation. You just uh, select your language, just to continue. Okay, which keyboard layout do you want? I use US, so I just to continue here. Okay, you do want to install multimedia coded. If you are a basic user, basically that means that uh, it will load all the multimedia thing. So if you want to watch any of the video, it should not cause any problem. Okay. So installation type, that's where you are going to select something else instead of erase and install Linux mapped. So once you go ahead, and you should be able to see in the installation type, you should be able to see your actual hard drive. In my hard drive, I have 107 GB of uh, storage allocated. If you are starting new, you need to do new partition table. If you already have installed some Linux distribution, you will be able to see your actual separated partition here as well. So first thing we will need, it's a EFI system partition which is going to be used for like boot part and booting part and everything okay you don't need more than 200 uh, megabyte just for safety i'm going to go with 500 mbs from users you can just go here and select as a efi partition okay and just do okay so now we have 500 mbs around separated for efi it's normal to see one mb just just as a glitch or i'm not sure why it's there but you should be able to see that always next thing so next thing we want to do is separate our root partition that's where our root file or all the file will be stored okay so for now i'm just going to give like 50 gb ideally you should have like 30 gb or 50 gb storage allocated to root partition if you're going to use it for heavy tasks like gaming and everything you should allocate more in my personal pc i have uh, like 450 gb separated for root partition out of 1 tb so how you can calculate it in mb if you don't know okay you can use a calculator so inside calculator let's say i want 50 gb separated for uh, root partition you can just do 50 multiply 1024 and that's the value you will need so 1000 uh sorry 51200 that's what you are typing here okay so 51200 and by default that's mine okay ex ext4 general league system that's what we are going to use as part of linux mint or ubuntu or any debian based system if you are using fedora it's going to do btr uh btrfs instead of ex ext fine but it's it's fine don't need to worry about that for mount point just select slash that means we want to set it as a root partition okay. so now you should be able to see our root partition as a slash here our efi partition now let's look into the swap partition or swap area what does it mean so if you look here, you should be able to see a swap area or swap partition. What what do we mean by swap area or swap partition? Okay, so I have created another block just separated. I'll just briefly explain what is a swap partition and why you need a swap partition. Okay. 
So swap partition is nothing but your backup RAM. So let's say if you have four gigabyte of RAM and you ran off ran out of all of the RAM, that's where you can use a swap space or swap partition. A majority of newer version of Linux Mint or any other distribution. The system by default use swap file, so we don't need to create a swap partition separately. By default, swap file will be like two gigabyte, okay, which is more than enough, okay. So you don't need to do anything there, but just for the safe side, if you want to play along, you can create a swap partition because it's easy to create when you are doing the installation and it's hard to create after the installation. So if you want to do after the installation, you can go with swap file. The only thing with swap file, it's little bit more complicated than uh, creating a swap partition. You need to write bunch of the code. Okay. It's not that hard. If you just read it off and just copy paste the code, you should be good to go. Okay. You don't need to worry about that. But if you think that uh, it's it's hard to implement afterwards, you can just create a swap file. Oh, sorry, swap partition here. So just for the beginner friendly video, I'm just going to include four gigabyte as a swap partition. Okay. So again, so you can do four multiply with 1024 4096 okay that's the value we are using okay for majority of time this should be more than enough if you want to use hibernation okay we don't need to get into that right now but if you want to use hibernation you should have at least equal to your ram okay swap partition it's supposed to be uh like if you have like 16 GB of RAM, you are supposed to have uh, 16 GB of swap partition. If you have more than 16 GB, you don't need like, let's say you have 32 GB of RAM, you don't need 32 GB of swap partition. 16 GB is more than enough. But we don't want to get into what is hibernation at this point. Okay. So let's just create a swap partition. Okay. So now we have a swap partition. And last but not least, home partition. Okay. You don't need to change anything, just select slash home. And that's creating your home partition. Okay. So that's what it should look like. Okay. Once you do install, now you have your home partition separated, your swap file separated. You can see here we have a ESP a partition. We have our ext4 okay one partition and other ext4 for our home partition we have also swap partition okay let's do continue our installation okay for now it's fine you can change the region if you like your name you can type any name you want for me i'm just writing uh, let's say we like you okay computer name by default it suggests something you can change it always so Let's do VLIQ PC, okay? Username VLIQ, password you can select, a very secure password, okay? I'm just selecting 1234, okay? You don't want to encrypt your home folder, okay? It's good if you are using it for longer time and if you want it to be more secure, but I would not recommend to encrypt your home folder because if you do so, it's very hard to resize if something goes wrong. So don't encrypt your home folder just to continue. Okay. So now it should proceed with the installation. One eternity later. Okay. So once the installation is finished, you can just do restart now. So while it's restarting, it will ask for uh, remove your pen drive or remove the boot drive and just hit enter. We'll see that message in a moment. So it should be right here. Okay. So since I'm using the virtual machine, I just press enter. You remove the pen drive or boot drive and then press enter. Okay.
So once you install your Linux Mint, that's how your interface will look. Okay, just a moment. So once you install your Linux Mint, that's what your interface will look like. Okay, just in myself here. So initially what you want to do, okay, welcome page. You don't want to show this every time. So let's go. First step, you don't need to do anything this, okay. I would recommend to update everything. You can do it from the update manager. I will show you after that, okay. So if you are totally new, you can just click here, okay. This is update manager, okay. And you can just uh, switch to the nearest local mirror. Okay, enter your password. And you can just click on apply updates after setting up your nearest mirror. So for me nearest it's uh, Waterloo, apply, paste, then this is the first one, okay. Whichever is getting the highest speed, you select that and just to apply. Click here to update. Okay. So once it's updated, you can just close it and apply the update. This is more graphical way of doing it. I personally like to do it with command line. So you can just hit Control Alter T. That should open up your command line or you can select the command line from here as well. Okay. You just do sudo apt update okay and and apt upgrade okay this command should uh, upgrade and update all the repositories and everything you have okay once you do it it's going to take some time so let's wait for it and uh, let's go to firewall okay and just click on here okay that's what you want to do once you install your linux mint okay so now the firewall is activated you can uh, you can also do the update command okay it's going to take some time so in meantime let's look at uh, disk okay inside disk you should be able to see now your partition separated okay you should be able to see where it's located okay so this is your root file system and this is your home partition so one thing to remember okay i'll just hit yes here okay so one thing to remember whenever you are doing reinstall of linux mint or any other distribution with separated home partition just uncheck that home partition when you do installation okay if you have home partition selected as part of the installation that will format the home drive so just make sure you do, you are not selecting home partition when you do the reinstallation okay so i tend to like after after doing all of this thing i tend to install genome desktop or ubuntu minimal desktop i like the genome desktop cinnamon it's great but uh, i'm used to genome for a long time so i'm, I'm using that you can find out the video up there okay how to install genome desktop in linux mint so last thing is it worth installing separated home partition i would say yes it's worth installing home partition separated if you are doing like distro hopping or finding out which distribution work for you for me i'm using it just to have everything separated okay and you can do so if you like my video Please do like, share, subscribe and comment and don't forget to hit that bell icon and see you in the next video.